This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create a simulated gradient between two different colors where it looks like it's a gradient, but it's really just a series of individual colors that create the illusion of a gradient. And then I'll be showing you how you can take those individual colors and create a custom swatch from them within Inkscape. And this is something that really comes in handy if you're coloring something in and you'd like to use a specific theme like you see me doing here on my screen. I took a, a, a gradient between green and blue and used it to recolor this graphic here and I'll, sh I'll show you how to do just that so let's go ahead and get started here with Inkscape the first thing we want to do is make sure we are working with a similar view so we'll go to file document properties and I'm going to set the display units to pixels and then I'll set the page border to off turn off the visibility of the page border then we can close out of that I'll come up here to where it says view and make sure we have that set to custom and then we'll zoom in at one to one and then I'm going to open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button right there. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to grab the Squares and Rectangles tool, and I'm going to hold Control and Shift and click and drag to create a perfectly symmetrical square like that. And then I'll convert it to a path by going to Path, Object to Path. And we're going to color this in with the first color we want to use. So I'm going to use a gradient between uh, yellow and pink. But you can use whatever two colors you'd like. So I'm, going to, I'm just going to use yellow here for the first one. I'm going to grab the select tool, put this over here to the top left of the page, and then I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate, hold control, click and drag this off to the right, and I'm going to make that one pink. And then I'll hold control and click on the original one so we have them both selected, and then I'll go to extensions, generate from path, interpolate. And in the interpolation menu, uh, we want to have exponent set to 0, interpolation steps set to 8, interpolation method set to 1, and then the only thing checked from these three right here is interpolate style. And I should note up here where it says interpolation steps, this determines how many different colors you'd like within your swatch. So if you'd like like a large, robust variety of colors to work with, like maybe something like 30, what you do is you subtract 2 and then you write in 28. And the reason you subtract 2 is because you already have these two colors defined up here. So I personally like to work with 10. I think 10 is a nice variety, but at the same time, it's not too much. So I subtract 2 from 10 and I get 8. So I'll go ahead and click Apply. And there is our simulated gradient, individual colors. I'm going to close out of that menu. And if you click on this object right here, the new objects are grouped together, as you'll see. I'm going to ungroup them with this button up top that says Ungroup Selected Objects. And there we go. Click off of that to deselect everything. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up the Swatches menu. I'm going to go to View. And where it says Swatches, go ahead and click on that. And it's going to open up in the side panel here. There's no colors in there yet, but uh, we're going to add them in. So. I'm going to click on this first one, and under the Fill tab right here, come all the way to the right where it says Swatch. Go ahead and click that, and go ahead and do this for the rest of these colors. Click on the next one, click Swatch, and you'll notice as you click them, it's adding these individual colors into this list down here. Let's go through and add these all to your swatches as well. In order to get it appearing in the window here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click that giant red X and there we have all of our different colors. And if you notice now what you can do is you can go ahead and create custom shapes and you can now color them in with your swatches up here as if this were a regular color menu. So that's how you can go about doing that with Inkscape. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.